With me now is Tim O'Brien, who's a urologist at Guy's Hospital in London, and also Bertie Lee, who is a medical solicitor. Welcome to both of you. Now, we're talking about the management of renal problems through the prism of the law court. What does that mean? Well, we wanted to explore some of the controversies in kidney cancer management through different methods, really. Conventionally, one has urologists talking to urologists about that. We wanted to introduce a lawyer into the mix and see how see how people from outside our specialty might view risk and complications and problems that we have and dilemmas that we have, the, the everyday dilemmas of managing people with kidney cancer. And Bertie, what's your input on this? How do you view the risk maybe differently from a urologist? I was trying to make them think about what they do and see how it might appear from the outside. For example, one of the things in the first case we were looking at was whether or not they should biopsy kidneys before they perform a partial or a radical nephrectomy. I pointed out that almost every other cancer in the body, the surgeons will insist on having a biopsy to help their diagnosis before they operate. And for some reason, uh, kidney cancers, they don't. Very in large numbers of cases, they still do not do uh, biopsies before and I was suggesting to them that this is because their thinking was formed at a time when biopsies were less good the sense of being less safe and less accurate in predicting whether the cancers and whether they were being a bit slow in catching up with other aspects of their own art. And what would you say about that Tim? Yes it's interesting why to think why biopsy is so uh, so rarely performed um, we don't really know the answer. It was one of the interesting uh, aspects of the session, actually. But uh, I think our view in our hospital is that you, you can't be doing major surgery on patients who are perhaps frail or elderly, and then the diagnosis turns out to be benign. You can't find out that something's benign once you've done a major procedure to them. You should find out that something's benign before you get to the major procedure, because the major procedure potentially becomes not required. And would you say that uh, renal cancer patients are more litigious than other types of patients? No, I don't think they are. In fact, I, if anything, I think they're less, less, less. litigious. It, it very often happens in cancer that people are not litigious because still the reason why people sue doctors is because they underestimate the sinister nature of disease and the complexity of the disease and they have exaggerated expectations of what can be achieved. Yeah. In cancer, we don't. And in renal cancer, the consequence of surgery is not generally associated with serious functional loss. Um, some cancers you remove the prostate or the bladder or the breast, there is massive functional loss. Uh, in kidney cancer, it's hidden away. There isn't often functional loss. There may be disappointment about having lost a kidney, but there isn't functional loss. And is that down to education of these are the risks of the side effects? Uh, I think education is very important. I think the reason is that we've all got two kidneys and surgeons tend to over rely on that when thinking about what's in the best interest of their patients. But you're absolutely right. Generally, medicine is far more about communication than ever before and doctors have to get much, much cleverer about communicating with their patients in a way and at a time when patients can lay down the information and making robust records of the fact that they've done so. Their records are for themselves and their skills are for their patients and they're not creating the records that they need to justify their actions. And Tim, finally, how much do you think you should as a physician have an eye on possible legal action when you are recommending treatment? I think that's a very good question. The, I, I, I don't think one wants people to practice defensive medicine uh, and be overly legal. One can't possibly create a legal document uh, with all of its niceties in the moment of a consultation. But one can create a document that stands up to significant scrutiny quite straightforwardly. And as Bertie said, it's for our own benefit. We should do things that are for our own benefit. I think in 30 seconds, one probably could write down crucial things that potentially uh, mean that you're, you're safe. I certainly don't want them to start practicing in a fashion that's going to be defensive and look good in court. But I do think that more and more great doctors say to themselves almost every day, is this the way I would want my sister, my brother to be treated? 
and I think that's a question which doctors should ask themselves, especially when they're part of a team and they have to accept responsibility for what a lot of other people are doing as well. Fascinating. Well, thanks very much, both of you. Not at all. Our pleasure. Thank you.